the 12th century before Christ, the Israelite peoples came to dwell in Palestine. But here they forgot Jehovah and the blessings they had received from him. And they began to adore false gods. Jehovah once more abandoned his children and delivered them into the hands of their enemies. However, the Lord was moved to compassion. And so he sent them exceptional men who were capable of rekindling the spark of true faith in the heart of Israel and of leading it to reconquer its freedom. The people gave the name of judges to these great leaders. Two of them were Gideon and Samson. You're the only one who saved his crop. It takes a clever man to do that, Gideon. All the others were taken by surprise in the fields. But not you. That's too bad for them. You all know that the same thing happens every year. No sooner is the harvest ready than those greedy Midianites descend. Like locusts. They don't leave us a sheep, an ass, a grain of wheat, nothing. Why can't the others think of it in time? I cut my grain when it's still a bit green and bring it up here. Maybe it's the fault of the people down there, around the altar of Baal. Even if they believed in Jehovah, they wouldn't be spared. They're not very bright, that's all. They've become idol worshippers. They've done evil in the eyes of Jehovah. And Jehovah has abandoned them. I knew it. I knew it the moment I set eyes on you. Every time we're in trouble, someone arrives with a sermon all ready for us. Prophets and wise men. That's all Jehovah sends us. And all they ever do is repeat, you've become Idol worshippers, you've done evil in the eyes of Jehovah. Jehovah has abandoned you. Jehovah's also sent you his judges. Sure, he has. But for some time now, we've had to make do with prophets. Unless you are the new judge who's come to save Israel from the Midianites. No, Gideon, I'm not. But I know whom the Lord has chosen this time. You do, do you? And who could he be? It's you, Gideon. Look here, friend. That's not funny at all. It wasn't meant to be funny. Who are you, anyway? You spring up out of nowhere. You know all about me, and I don't know anything about you. I'm Gideon, all right, but as far as I'm concerned, you're nobody. The Lord knows you are a brave man, and even if you don't seem to be aware of it, you will free your brothers from the yoke of Midian. Come now. You speak as if the Lord had whispered all that stuff in your ear. <laughs> he has. 
Gideon. Oh, stop it! My family is the poorest in the tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. How can you think the that... The Lord is with you. What are you afraid of? The first thing you must do is this. Take a young bull and pull down the altar of Baal. Cut down its sacred pole. Then build there an altar to the Lord your God and sacrifice the bull to him. No, you can't. You, you can't order me to do that. If I destroy the altar of Baal, they, they will tear me to pieces. I'm I... not the one who's asking you, Gideon. It is the Lord who orders you. Your own conscience wants it. Where are you going? Oh. I haven't slept all night. It, it was much too cold. Oh, yes. When the goats were sick, you couldn't sleep either because it was much too cold. What did that stranger want from you? If it were to lead a thousand sheep to pasture, or even hold back a herd of wild horses, sure, I could do it. And I'm not just bragging. Because when that mad bull had to be stopped, you saw I was the only one up to it. But that fellow. Which fellow? That stranger. He talks on and on, playing with that little stick he always carries. If I tell you everything, you'll get angry. But you won't, will you? All right, then don't. Keep your troubles to yourself and let me sleep in peace. It seems Jehovah has sent